Hello! This video will be my first and hopefully a series of devlogs on my new game Sundown. This video will have two sections. In the first, I'll be showing off the first models for the game I've made, and in the second, I'll be going over a bunch of comments with feedback from the first video and saying what I have changed in turn. Once again, and I'll say this a lot in the video too, please comment with any feedback you have. And if you haven't seen it, please go check out the pitch video for the game before watching this. Okay, so here's the straw pod. These will be in the Morass Crater, the starting biome. As you can see, they're bioluminescent. The way these guys will work lore-wise is that they uh, interact, there's chemicals inside them that interact with stomach acid in the species of this plant, and so when they're digested, they'll explode spreading all their seeds. So that's just some lore on how they spread. So here it is, the straw pod. This was the first one I modeled. Then here's the straw pod plant. This is what they will be spawning on, on these little stems here. I'm not a huge fan of this one. So I'll, pro I'll probably be changing this a lot, but other people seem to like this, so I may keep the same shape, but I just think it's not that appealing to look at. So here's the flash bulb. These will spawn in the grassland hoop biome around the morass crater, and when predators are near, this ball on the top will start uh, strobing. So you'll be able to see these like quick flashes of light when creatures are near, like dangerous ones, and so you'll get this like ominous sense about that. Um, and you'll also be able to harvest these uh, flash bulbs to create makeshift flares. They won't be that good, but you'll still be able to see a little bit with them. I just want to have some like different unique interactions with the environment like that. So here you go. Then here is the Mott Fern. These will also be in the grassland hoop, and they have these uh, bowls to collect water because this biome uh, is pretty sparse with water, or rain I guess. So you see they have these uh, white speckles which help collect the water. And on the undersides, they have veins, which transport down to the roots. Then here's the Bachnut. These are a lot like, uh, I guess, the Earth equivalent to coconuts. So the way these guys work is you twist them in half, like you grab the top half and the bottom half and you twist it, and they're vulnerable vulnerable, vulnerable around this middle section here, so they will uh, slice open. And then there'll be seeds in the middle part and juices for the creatures who do this. They're the main uh, source of nutrition for a species called the beak salamander. And these holes on them are where stems could be growing from to their plant. And here's their plant, the bachnut palm. One thing I want to preface with these malls is that when I made them, I didn't know how to texture mask. I now do. So I'll be going back to a lot of these models and adding more texture to them. Texture masking basically means I can overlay a texture on top of the one I made to give it depth and to give it like realistic like a realistic look because as you can see a lot of this is flat colors but aside from that this is my favorite one I really like this model and also another thing to preface the this is like my first time modeling really each of these models I learned something new so even if I have to redo all these I learned a lot while making them so that's enough for me so here it is the Bachnut Palm so the way this works is you have the bock nuts growing on the underside, or not the underside, on the bottom of the plant, and you have these leaves protecting them from the water. These leaves aren't meant to uh, ca collect sunlight, they are just meant to uh, gather rainwater. And you can see that they have these staggered veins instead of uh, symmetrical ones. Then here's the ghost cap. I really, really like this one's design. It's very simple, but I think it... It transmits everything it needs to do with this design. So these will be spawning in the Lightroom Corridors biome. So in-game, they won't actually look like this. They will have something called chromatophores, which are basically a type of cell that allows something to change its color. This is what octopi and cuttlefish use. So they will actually be uh, hidden in-game. They'll kind of look like uh, what the Predator does when he has his like cloaking technology on. So they'll be very hard to find, but as you can see in the underside, they have these holes. These are where they transmit or shoot out spores. And their spores either shine in the light, or, and by light, I mean like uh, the light from other biolum bioluminescent mushrooms, not like sunlight. They either will shine in the light or just glow on their own. And so you'll be able to find them by the glowing spores in the sky near them. My friend who knows a bit about mushrooms told me that this is not a good, uh, this would be a very frail mushroom because of how um, thin this part is. And that's okay because 
These guys will be blocked by the bigger mushrooms above them, the uh, glow shrooms, or no, the light shrooms. So they will not be uh, interacting with many of the elements. Then here is the boon leaf. Now as you can see, this one's a work in progress. This is where I figure out how to, uh, what's it called again? I just learned it. Texture mask. This is where I learned to texture mask. So they're not, I haven't transmitted that over to the actual plant yet. But um, here it is. So I still need to add some like extra textures to it. But um, the way this guy works, okay, I'm not going to explain the whole way it works because it's very complicated. But this guy has like a, like a almost nesting doll type symbiotic relationship with another pair of plants in the biome it's from, the polar highlands. But to give the gist, these leaves are meant to um, collect the snow and that snow will then melt and give it water. And through the use of water, sun, and a couple other things, it will be able to create a chemical called bike dose. It's a made up chemical. And that chemical glows, as you can see by the glowing veins. And this will be transmitted through its roots and it will nurture the rest of the biome. Then here is the striped mega leaf. This is the biggest out of all of them. It'll be very, very big. This will also be in the grassland hoop. So here you go. I don't know if I like this leaf pattern or not. The, the way it's supposed to work is they kind of um, overlap and intersect with each other to create this like complicated design, but it doesn't look that organic. I'm not sure about it, but um, here you go. I also, this is the first model I learned, I, I made after knowing how to texture mask, so as you can see it actually has texture to it. I, I went with a blurred one, so it wasn't as um, strong, but I'm not sure if that makes it look like just like a low texture model, or like a low resolution model or not, so I might have to redo that. But um, here it is. Then here's the spore pod. I'm probably going to redo this one. I'm not a huge fan of its design, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it at all really, because I, I might want to have these be uh, translucent. These will also be in the um, Lightroom Corridors biome, and I have no idea how they're supposed to work. I just know that there's supposed to be a resource you can collect, so this is probably going to be a scrapped one, but just wanted to show it off in case. Okay, so now on to answering comments from the first video. You can also go check my replies to those comments that I made. I copied some things I said from those to this video, but my responses are more thorough here. The first point this person makes is how Subnautica is very graphically intense, and I agree, but thankfully it won't be a huge toll on me since Unreal Engine 5 has Lumen, a really beautiful lighting engine, so it shouldn't be hard to get a good looking game. Then they detail how the game could look in a really beautiful way, so thank you for that. Their next point is about storage in survival games, and how it can be really annoying transporting items across your bases. In my game, you'll really only have one base, but it'll be big, so some sort of special storage system is definitely needed too. My idea was that storage containers are color-coded, and containers with the same color will be synced, and there would be a default color like, I don't know, white, that wouldn't sync. This person also suggests auto-crafting with nearby storage containers, which I might do, it depends on if I can make it work, and if it wouldn't make storage less interesting. They also suggest a drone platform you can build, which would allow you to store your inventory on, which could be upgraded to bring your emergency gear if needed. I like your guys' thoughts on this drone idea, and solutions for storage management in general. I'm not sure how the drone thing would work in practice without negating the fear factor, but I think it's possible. Their last point is about how Subnautica felt a lot less scary when you learn you can just kill about everything, and I agree. That is why only very small creatures can be killed. They do say it is tough to have scary creatures that you can't kill, but that you can't also avoid. And I think that's the perfect use of the flashlight. Through its strobe mode or UV mode, you can damage and scare off enemies without just being able to kill them. There will also be propulsion boots and propellers to escape them. If you got any thoughts on how the UV mode could work on the flashlight against bigger enemies without just stunning them, please tell me. I was thinking they might just run away from it. This commenter suggested being able to move your base around. Now this would be tough, as all base parts would have to be capable of moving around, and it would be get very janky with a big base, but I can totally understand how a sky base where it's just a huge, flat plane would be boring. So my idea is to be able to deploy extra sun pods, a certain distance away from your current one in any four directions, creating moving platforms in between the two. This would allow a lot of variety and wouldn't break the game or the balancing. I have added this to the blueprint, but I'd still like your guys' feedback on that. Okay, now this guy actually knows what they're talking about, unlike me, so there's going to be a lot to go through. So the first thing they mention is that Crew 5 is not big enough for colonization, which is true, 
But the crews sent by Salerna are not to colonize plants, they are to gather data on if they could be made habitable. Then they make the excellent point that propellers are a dumb way to keep a base floating in the sky. So for now, I'm switching to hydrogen blimp devices. Now, the problem with this is that I'd rather put these on the bottom of the platform still, but I know blimps have the envelope on the top. I don't know anything about blimps, I had to look up the part of a blimp that I just called up now, but if you know, could I have bags of hydrogen heated underneath the platforms or does that not work? From the little research I did, it seems like it might be possible. Also, I went with hydrogen because it's a lot more dangerous than helium, and I like the idea that Salerno would go with the cheaper, flammable option instead of helium. Then they mentioned bioluminescence, which as you can see from the straw pod model, I will definitely include a lot of bioluminescent stuff. But they also mentioned how there could be vents that spew toxic chemicals, allowing for bacteria that can support the ecosystem, and I agree that's a great way to support the creatures on the planet. I'm kind of going for an ecosystem where energy is so hard to get and conditions are so extreme that a lot of the species have developed very unique ways of getting energy, like plants that use thermal energy, or vines that stretch up beyond the clouds. So adding a bacteria like that would be awesome. The thing is, that wouldn't really matter to the gameplay or require any interaction, so if I do add these vents, it'll probably be later on. These would also explain why, or what the clouds are trapping in, because I want to have a toxic chemical being trapped in by the clouds, and I think having vents that spew in that chemical would work. They also mentioned how the materials in Sonaka were chosen deliberately for their uses, and mine were as well, but I also had the caveat of not wanting to copy Sonaka, so I use a lot of more out there materials and such. I'll probably be changing some of these, or at least the names of some of their combinations, but I don't have any idea on what to change them to. So if you have any minerals in mind that could work that aren't in Samaka, please comment them. And then the most interesting thing they bring up is how night could be a very stressful time for the player. I wasn't actually thinking about this much, but another comment gave, it, gave a similar idea, so I am thinking of going with that. They suggest you'll need an alternate energy source at night. While I want Slurner Tech to be almost entirely solar energy based, I think the idea that you have to use biofuel at night to keep your base afloat will be really fun. And it can even say something like when you're crafting, like, warning not Salerna approved. So at night, if you don't have enough energy stored up, you'll have to frantically descend and harvest plants to fuel the bioreactor. Lastly, they say that clouds would probably cause huge fungal organisms, and luckily I am planning a mushroom-based biome, the Lightroom Corridors, and lots of heavy rainfall. Multiple comments have mentioned rainfall, and I definitely think having all would be fun, and be another way to cloak creatures from you. Biggie Cheese 726 suggested I do use a base integrity system, and they suggested that if you don't have enough integrity, parts of your base will fall into the surface. Which sounds super fun, but that would be really hard to code for a new person like me, and I want to try a different system than what Naga had, but of course, thank you for the ideas, I love all these. This person, like a couple others, disagree with my decision to not add vehicles. When I initially thought about vehicles, I assumed they would be land ones, which I definitely don't want to do for a lot of reasons and air vehicles were out of the question because there's nothing to do in the air besides make your base. But, after realizing how much air mobility the player would already have, I thought it might be cool for there to be floating resources. I'm not sure how it would work, but there could even be floating pods that you'll need, to, you'll need a vehicle to collect, or maybe even floating islands, albeit that would be harder for an explanation. The point is, I think the idea of resources that you can only get in the sky would be a really fun idea, and it would mean you get little breaks from being in the dark land. Someone else mentioned they had a similar idea and thought of wingsuits, which would also be super fun. I'd love any feedback on this idea. This person suggested a thermal energy mechanic to charge your suit while on the surface. Well, I don't want this because as I said, Salerna should use almost exclusively solar power based tech. I have a planned biome, the Lava Ravine, which would be so bright that it can charge your sunsuit. So it would be a similar mechanic, just with a different explanation. This commenter suggested better prefixes than just sun, and I agree. Initially, the sun pod was called the light pod, but I forgot that somewhere along the line, and I didn't feel like changing the name everywhere I had put down. So yes, in the future, if I add more tools, mods, etc., I will be using a great variety of prefixes. I'd be down for changing the name of the sun pod too, but I don't know if light pod sounds better or not. Julian Hawk said the strobe mode should instead be a big flash of light, and I think that's a great idea. We talked a bit more and decided a good name for the flashlight mod would be the stun mod, and when the mod is equipped, there will be a prompt on the screen saying insert button to stun burst. This person suggested I use a different name from Salerna because the lure doesn't sound good. 
Now, I chose this name because it was the least syllable name I could find that had something similar to Solar in the name, and wasn't already in use by a big company or something. When you look up Salerna, the only thing that comes up is a rock and demon slayer, but I can live with that. Still, if you agree the name doesn't sound good and have a suggestion, please tell me. Snowy Days asked when I would be able to release the game in some form to the public. I genuinely have no idea, but I'll probably release it publicly when I have a demo to show off, and I really hope that doesn't take longer than a year or two. Goblin553 said it would be cool if there was a reward for scanning Sky Beasts outside of progressing the story, and that sounds awesome. They thought of something like a mounted tooth or a picture on the wall, but I think what would be even cooler is a hologram device which you can use to display any creature you have scanned, including Sky Beasts. So then, you could have a room with all of the creatures you've scanned. I like this idea because not only does it reward you for scanning Sky Beasts, it rewards you for scanning all creatures and it makes up for the lack of an aquarium. Now I feel bad about this one, but this person commented that they love the idea, but they'd probably not be playing it because they have a fear of heights. And I had actually not thought of utilizing the Fear of Heights, so I'll definitely be thinking about that when designing elements of the game. So sorry about that, Whisker113A, but thank you for the idea. Toby Wright asked if I could make the game procedurally generated, which I will probably not be doing. I don't want to tack on another huge thing I have to learn, so I'm just going to try and keep it to the few things I already have to learn. <laughs> but the reasoning for procedural generation is as a way of adding replayability, which is something I do want to do. So, if you have any ideas for ways to add replayability, please comment them. This person asked if there would be creatures that only came out at night, and yes, at least the Moon Whale Sky Beast. But I want more. Someone suggested it would be cool if there were creatures that only came out at night because of how cold it was, and I think that's a really fun idea. Lastly, I had a couple people say the game felt too much like Subnautica or like a port copy. To be fully transparent, I named the initial video Subnautica but in the sky to get people's attention and tell them what the game will sort of be like, but I don't really think that's a direct similarity. In Subnautica, you explore the water. In Sundown, you don't explore the sky. I agree, that'd probably be really boring. You explore the pitch black surface, so try and look past the title, please. Now in terms of actual mechanics in the game, I tried to expand on what I felt Subnautica lacked, or at least what this game could do that Subnautica couldn't. In Subnautica, there wasn't much interaction with Leviathans besides avoiding them and killing them if you're in your second playthrough. But I wanted a different route where Sky Beasts cannot be killed, but they can be tracked, and you have to interact with them. Your Sky Base will have to coexist with giant flying monsters, and to do so you'll have to track their flight patterns and build your base around them. You'll also have to scan them, so there'll be a whole mechanic around motion detected spotlights and baiting Sky Beasts in other ways. Each will have a different method you'll have to use to scan them. Base building is also a lot different. In Subnautica, your base had to be airtight because you're in the water most of the time. But in Sundown, your base would be open air, so the building style would end up being a lot different. There's other things like a different story, tools, creatures, plants, and an expansion of mods, but I'm really just trying to demonstrate how different the game will be in mechanics and game loop. It is obviously derivative of Sonaka, but I think the similarities will become surface level. <laughs> Pun intended. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first devlog, and hopefully I'll be having more of these come out soon, and just remember, any thoughts on the plants or anything I mentioned in this video, please tell me them in the comments. Goodbye.